The power didn't just flicker, it died. And with it, that comforting hum of the furnace you ignored your whole life is gone. Your home is no longer a shelter. It's a collection of wood and drywall, rapidly trying to equalize with the frozen nightmare outside. Most people panic about the darkness or the looters, rookies. The dark won't kill you, the cold will. It is patient, silent, and mathematically guaranteed to win if you just sit there. You're probably thinking about fire. Forget it. Lighting an open flame in a modern sealed home is a carbon monoxide suicide pact. Doing it outside is a beacon telling every desperate soul within five miles that you have warmth to steal. No, you don't get fire. Today, you survive on physics. You are a biological reactor, running at 98 degrees in a world that wants you at zero. The thermostat is dead. You are the heater now. Stop shaking. Panic burns calories, and right now, calories are heat. We need every single one. Focus up. Here is the first step. Method one, the perimeter lockdown. Your windows are not architectural features. They are massive, transparent holes in your insulation. In the world of thermodynamics, glass is basically a polite suggestion for heat to stay inside. It won't listen. A single pane of glass has an R value of almost zero. It is conducting your precious body heat straight into the atmosphere via radiation and conduction. You need to blind the house. If you have bubble wrap, you have gold. Mist the glass with water and stick the bubble wrap directly to the pane. Those tiny bubbles create a dead airspace, an insulating buffer zone. No bubble wrap? Use cardboard. Tape it over the glass. Next, cover the frames. Drapery is not enough. Take your spare blankets, towels, or even a rug and nail them over the window frames. You aren't decorating. You are sealing a hole breach. Do not leave gaps. Air currents, drafts, are convection thieves. Hunt them down. Check the bottom of your doors. Roll up a towel or a pair of jeans and jam it against the crack. If you aren't using a door, tape the seam shut with duct tape. Your home should look like a paranoid bunker. If you can still see the street, you are losing the war. Darkness is insulation. Embrace it. Method two, the micro environment. Your apartment is too big. Your body is a 100 watt heater. Trying to heat a whole room with that is thermodynamic suicide. You need to shrink your universe. If you have a tent, pitch it indoors. It creates a double hull against the cold. No tent? Build a fort. This isn't a game, it's engineering. Use a table or bed frame and drape every heavy quilt you own over it. You need a tight thermal envelope to trap those 100 watts. Crucial rule, the floor. It is a thermal vampire. It drains heat via conduction faster than air does. Never sleep on the floor. Drag your mattress inside the fort. Stack cushions, cardboard, or yoga mats underneath. You need four inches of separation from the concrete. Get inside and seal it. It will get stuffy and smell like stale breath. Good. Fresh air is for corpses. Stale air is life. You've secured the environment. Good. But a warm box is useless if you are dressed like a victim. The cold is still hunting you and your clothes are the only shield you have left. Let's fix them. Method three, personal insulation. First rule, cotton is a corpse marker. Check your labels. If you are wearing jeans, you were dressing for a funeral. Cotton acts like a wick, absorbing moisture and losing all insulating value. It conducts heat away from your body 25 times faster than air. Strip it off. You want wool, you want synthetics, you want the scratchy stuff that smells like a sheep. Think of clothing as a life support system. You know about layers, but here is the secret weapon, the vapor barrier. Your body sweats, even in the cold. It's insensible perspiration. That moisture travels outward, hits the dew point inside your jacket, and turns your down insulation into a block of ice. You need to stop it. Go to the kitchen, grab a heavy-duty garbage bag, cut holes for your head and arms. Wear this plastic vest between your base layer and your sweater. It is called a VBL, Vapor Barrier Liner. It stops evaporative cooling instantly. It keeps your sweat against your skin and your insulation bone dry. Do the same for your feet. Thin sock, plastic protease bag, 
thick sock, boot. Yes, you will feel like a swamp creature. Yes, it is gross. Get over it. Dry insulation keeps you warm. Wet insulation kills you. You are sacrificing dignity for thermodynamics. Look stupid, stay alive. You are a human thermos now, but insulation is passive. It doesn't create warmth, it only traps it. If your metabolic engine stalls, the best gear in the world won't save you. You need fuel. Method four, the metabolic furnace. Food is no longer a meal, it is coal. Your body is a biological reactor turning chemical energy into thermal energy. If you stop feeding the engine, the fire goes out. Shivering is your body's emergency generator, a desperate muscle spasm to create friction heat. If you are shivering, you are already in debt. We need to pay that debt. Forget your diet, survival is not the time for a salad. Leafy greens are useless water. You need dense, dirty fuel. You want fats. Fat contains nine calories per gram compared to four for carbs. If you have butter, eat it. Take a spoonful of peanut butter right before you sleep. Digestion is a thermodynamic process that generates waste heat. You're stoking the furnace to run through the night. But here's the mistake that kills the most people, hydration. Never, under any circumstances, eat snow. It looks like water, but it is a heat sink. To turn solid ice into liquid water requires a massive energy spike, the latent heat of fusion. Your body has to provide that energy. If you eat snow, your core temperature screams to melt it. You're trading your life's heat for a sip of water. It is a suicide transaction. Melt the snow in a bottle inside your jacket layers using waste heat, or don't drink it. Protect your core temperature. It is the only currency that matters. You have fueled the engine. Now let's look at the final variable. Method five, biothermal aggregation. Look at the people or pets in the room. They aren't family right now. They are biological space heaters running at 98 degrees. In a freeze, personal space is a luxury that belongs to the dead. You need to aggregate. If you have a dog, get it in the fort. A large dog is a furnace. If you have family, sleep in a pile. It's called bundling. By huddling, you drastically reduce the exposed surface area of the group, minimizing convective heat loss while sharing radiative warmth. Alone, you were fighting a solo war against entropy. Together, you are a collective heat engine. Swallow your pride, get close, survive. The sun will rise, and when it does, you won't be one of the frozen statistics found in the thaw. You will be tired, you will smell terrible, but you will be alive. Understand this, the cold is not evil. It doesn't hate you. It is simply entropy trying to pull you into thermal equilibrium. It is the universe demanding silence. Most people fight it with hope. You fought it with physics. You turned your home into a machine and your body into a fortress. You stripped away the illusions of comfort and embraced the brutal efficiency of survival. You didn't make it through the night because you were lucky. You made it because you refused to be fuel for the heat death of the universe. You looked at the second law of thermodynamics and said, not today. Stay warm, stay angry.